We have lanyards with the badges. The badge needs to be visible between neck and waist. I don't care how much it may mess up your cosplay because it doesn't look pretty. You can't wrap it around your wrist, you can't tie it on your belt, and you cannot tie it to the bottom of your shoe. <laughs> We've had people do this. Yeah, it's not on equal, equal footing with everyone else as far as pictures Right, and I actually had a situation last year where I had an attendee get so angry at me over it, I had to refer them to operations. That can and will happen sometimes. There's nothing we can do about it. It's a matter of visibility, so we know you are who you say you are. But the can just want to take a picture. Right, they can take it off, but they have to put it right back on when they come back in. Now, if you have any con-goers that have massive complaints with our, our security protocols, with our policies, and you try to talk to them and they're just being too belligerent, and you'll have at least one of these this year. I guarantee it, it's usually an angry mother. Bring them to the Yojimbo security office. We're actually going to have a Yojimbo office this year, so we're not actually directly in ops this time. This will be a good thing, that way we can keep certain issues outside of operations because a lot more people come inside off than just your Jimbo and this way if information is needing to be kept to a minimum in terms of spreading it it'll be easier to do so. Will that be the staff Yes. Yes. Uh, Yojimbo gets the a room suites. and an office and Lanai Suites this year. And your question? Yes Valley? Uh, something that I've been considering um, between MPS and Do we want to keep Lost and Found just at the info desk, or do we want to transfer the things over to one of the offices? Speak with Sheldon on that, because I don't know. He hasn't okay. mentioned anything, so you don't want to talk to him. My recommendation is to bring it into the offices. When you have a chance, bring it to the info desk first. After yeah. it's been there a while, if you need to change out shifts, somebody else goes, grab the stuff, bring it into the office. I am going to keep documentation during con of yes. what it's brought to On that vein, I think, unless Sheldon has any objections, let's assume that as part of the duties of whoever is manning the Ojimbo office at the time, bring it to the Ojimbo office. Okay. I'll keep a record up on my laptop. Anything we haven't covered? Questions? Badge colors, badge definitions. Blue, adults, yellow, 13 to 17, red, 12 and under. If you happen to see a red badge attendee sitting outside the hallway and they say their guardian is inside the room, go and politely stop the panel long enough to retrieve the guardian, then explain to the guardian that you cannot leave your child outside the room. I've actually had to do that before. There's no tying the puppy to the curb. Right. And Glad badges, that also touches on adult events. After when you after midnight in the gaming room, and then at, and general con space, and certain age-related restricted events, you will be required to have government-issued identification in order to gain entrance, partially because of the adult restricted material, partially because of the curfew. We will not accept badge alone as proof because so many people will swap out their badges. Includes birth certificate, passport, license, ID. Yes. Birth certificate, passport, license, permit, state ID, military ID is also acceptable. Some student. Is there not picture ID? If you have a birth certificate and a student ID that has your name, that has first and last name, not Yes. Okay, thank, thank you for pointing that out. I work in a movie theater. We have to check ID. <laughs> no, actually, that's a very valid point. Thank you, because I'll be making the necessary adjustments to the manual. I have a question. Yes? Okay. I went to job for a day issue. ID. We'll probably have job for a student. Yeah, that'll work. With the job for cap. Um, if, if job for is an extension of the government and issued by the state, so I will say yes. Because if we've got you, we've got you. I know you've both been through job for and I'm sure we'll have plenty of others. There's that'll people work. in the creation station who have been through job for. Okay, so yeah, that works. Now, 
uh, on the issues of medical scenarios, first aid scenarios, our registered nurse this year, Kat, Kat is actually leaving to head home at the moment, but we have an RN, has the code of nurse employee if there's a medical incident. If you happen to be first aid CPR trained, certified, and have your cards with you at the con, let us know and we'll find some sort of little sticker or something to put on your badge noting that you're certified. If you are not an RN or something, stick to the very basics of what your training allows because Oregon's good SAM law is extremely screwed up. You can get hammered so easily. So be very careful. You can't offer them medications. You can, however, off, open up the first aid kit and say, would you like a band-aid for that? Yeah, if that's it's all you can do. Pretty much. <laughs> if it's an emergency and they're passed out and they're unconscious and they're, or they're vomiting or you think they've had a heart attack, start the necessary preparations, get your partner to radio in for help, and then also have your partner take notes on a notebook with a piece uh, with the uh, pen or pencil. We'll be providing those for you. Do not, under any circumstances, touch blood or vomit without gloves on. Correct. Yes. That that's yeah. covered as part of the first aid training too. <laughs> or other various. Yeah. Don't touch bodily fluids that are not yours. Also, word of word of advice: If you are first aid trained, certified, you have gloves on you. If they are latex gloves, get nitrile. Because you will run into people like me, who I'm allergic to latex. Don't touch me with latex, it's bad. Alright, so one other thing I wanted to bring up, and that's shifts. I've been asked by a lot of volunteers, Yojimbo and others, as to when you basically dedicate yourself to it as being on staff that you cannot have any fun during the convention. It's not the case, we do want you to have fun while you're here. So shifts will vary depending on location, usually between two to four hours at a time. We're going to have sign-ups on the forums later on probably tonight. We're working on getting that online. Um, there'll be rowing positions, there'll be sitting positions, so you can sign up for them early. If you wait until the convention, we're going to throw you on a schedule at some point somewhere. Um, but we're not going to force you to work all day, every day from the con. Also, um, gonna wake up earlier, right? So, anybody else can get more stuff. Honestly, yeah, that's so, fair. I like just had a question like, uh, what time? I'm gonna do a quick walk around. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's 8 a.m., so 7. Have, yeah, you're gonna need to be up no later than 7 a.m., honestly. Like, do you guys want to, like, 7.20? Um, get, get up at 6.30, be ready to go by 7, because we'll probably have a mini staff meeting in the Yojimbo office before half Yes, Shelton, please. Yes, Valley. I'm sorry, little one here. Yeah, I'm kidding. Hey, hey.
I actually had two things that I wanted to ask and or say. Uh, first thing, are you guys going to have 24-hour shifts again this week? Hell no. Because <laughs> <laughs> you guys need some sleep. Not just no, but hell no. 